What is up, YouTube? This is your boy Omelette, bringing you actually some NHL 15 demo. So anybody who knows me knows that I'm a massive fan of hockey, a massive fan of the NHL franchise put up by EA Sports, all the way back to the old school Sega Genesis days. And this iteration is no different. I was very excited to see what exactly EA could bring to the next gen consoles, because the infinite amount of possibilities with graphics, physics engines and what exactly they could actually potentially achieve is something that really is just, I'm, I'm speechless at how excited at the possibilities for where this franchise can go I did actually pre-order the game and if you pre-order the game you end up with forty dollars worth of ultimate team money so if anything it sounds like it's equivalent to what it was last year which was a free pack every week for a year but instead of doling it out every week that's going to give it to you all up front that's perfectly fine with me. Um, the first thing you'll notice is that they actually redid the user interface, so it's more box-based, similar to something that you would see in a uh, in like a FIFA setup. Um, that's nice. It's much easier to navigate around. And I, I didn't think I mentioned, but the demo actually came out on the 27th. So just go to the PSN Xbox One and go check it out. I'm actually going to come back with you once this is done, so you can watch this court intro to every match. Good evening, everyone, along with Eddie Olchek, Mike Emmerich. Game about to start here. What strikes you right at the outset that we should be watching? Well, especially teams. Both these teams have a real good power play unit, a real good opportunity to move the puck around. So if you're going to take a penalty, it better be a good one. So especially teams, a big key in this game tonight. Let's look at the starting netminders. Jonathan Quick, the U.S. Olympic team's mainstay in Russia, over half a decade as the guy in goal for the Los Angeles Kings. Henrik Lundqvist is in goal tonight. He served no apprenticeship, just came to the New York Rangers in 2005. Their mainstay from the start won 30 every full season that he has played. So there you go. Uh, that is going to be a rough. In the intro is going to be played for every game. Um, of course, my assumption is that depending on who you're playing and the situation, that the commentary will be changed up. But to me, I think it looks really cool. It definitely echoes the vibe of a live television broadcast, the feel, the music, um, the stadiums, the entrance. Although I do think it is, it's a little off putting when you see live action people against what's clearly. A backdrop of a of a computer stadium and it's that whole uncanny valley type situation where this looks like people in front of a green screen but this is a demo uh, I know it comes out on the 9th so there's not too much time it's probably already been shipped to gold which means it's already being pressed so hopefully they can kind of fix that up and but then again it's also not that distracting because it is just the intro to the games and a lot of times I really don't look too in depth at the intros. I kind of skip ahead, so it doesn't bother me too much. But it is something that's a little off-putting. Um, here you're seeing a fight that I actually gets into. So yes, fighting is back. It is hockey. Fighting is a necessity. You hit triangle to engage in a battle. It controls just like in the past. Right thumbstick is punches. Right trigger is the ability to hold or grab somebody. The one thing that I I did think was a little weird is in an NHL 14 when he got into a fight. Whether you won or lost, you saw the damage on the individual's face. And if you kick the person's butt, you know, their face would be a black eye, it'd be bloody. And I didn't see that on this one. And you can see their faces now after the fight. And my character won pretty convincingly. And the guy's looks face face looks perfectly fine. So I'm hoping that maybe that gets put in later. And that's not an oversight because I think that's something that, while it sounds weird, is something that does add to the game itself. 
But I wanted one thing I did show you uh, when I first jumped into this game was each and every camera angle that they offer, and they offer a ton of different angles. And over the course of this demo, what you're gonna see me do is I'm gonna hop from the I think what's called um, over the top medium or something. And I'm going to hop across three or four different camera angles to kind of give you a sense and feel for what they're going for for each one. Uh, to me, it's really it's a personal preference. I like the medium one. It kind of gives you just enough depth, just enough distance, and keeps you close enough on the action. Uh, they do have the classic version. And they have one that's really weird to me. It's called Broadcast, and I actually show that in this demo. Well, it really looks like you're watching the TV. The, the angle is from the side. Um, and then they have true broadcast in which they actually zoom in on the plays as they're happening as they're watching a TV show. But it's kind of a weird perspective when you've played years and years of a hockey match and you're used to going north-south versus east-west. And you also lose a little bit of that depth and feel. But I do applaud them for giving so many unique and varied options just so that you can try to find the best option that is suited for you. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was the graphics. And undeniably, this game is absolutely beautiful. The player rendering to the actual fact when you look into the crowd, there's more than just three base character models in the crowd for fans. To me, that's always been kind of a pet peeve, so it's cool for me that they fixed it. No, I don't really think anybody else cares, but to me, it's huge. Uh, the movement is, is fantastic, so graphically, they hit it out of the park, except for that one little snafu that I did kind of talk about at the beginning. Now, my next thing I want to talk about is the gameplay, and this is the core behind the next-gen NHL 15. So, for those of you who don't know, the Hydron Super Collider is, uh, by the way, this is the broadcast mode, is a physics experiment where they were colliding two particles, trying to make mini black holes. Go read up on it, it's super cool. But the reason why I bring that up is they actually want it, brought in some of the physicists who worked on that, who also happen to be huge hockey fans to rework the entire physics engine and how items actually work in NHL 15 and as a direct result of it they end up having to completely redo their goalie system because pucks are moving in like weird odd angles and constantly going in and it was making the game too easy and that was the first thing that got me excited about this game but there's nothing more evident about this game than the physics when you get into it the the feeling of it being like an arcadey um, speed moving, heavy hitting, it's completely gone. Your character moves with a much more eloquent fluidity, and the, you can still get some really big hits, and you'll see me, I'll get some very nasty hits on this game. But the ease in which it was done in previous NHL games is gone. Now you have to be more precise with your movements, more precise if you're looking to queue up big hits. The days of just swinging your character across the screen and hitting the guy those are gone. Uh, to me, that's kind of nice. I mean, it adds to a sense of realism, though it does, it, it is a noticeable change when you pick it up, and I cannot stress that enough. I don't think it's a bad thing. I, th I think it's a step in the, right next, in the right direction. I mean, heck, if you're going to improve the graphics and improve the intro and improve the exit such that it's supposed to mimic watching real-life hockey, it stands the reason you'd also want to fix the, the physics engine so that it mimics reality. So I say um, bravo to them for that, but I do want to caution people. So I'll strongly urge you that if you've played other NHL games in the past, download the demo. It's out there. It's free. And get a good sense and feel for how this game actually plays to see whether or not you'll like it in the next version because it is slightly off-putting and does take a little while to get used to. But ultimately, I think it is a nice and smooth transition for the next generation of the game. So next thing I want to talk about is actually the, the, the ultimate team. And this is something that I'll enjoy doing in all EA Sport games is the ultimate team. Uh, they don't show any of it off in the demo except for the fact that they have one and that if you get a pre-order you get money towards that. The one thing that I'd love to see is for them to make an offline and an online ultimate team mode. So in FIFA, the one thing I love about the ultimate team is I can get my packs, get my cards, I can put them up on the trading block online, but I can run through seasons, join leagues, do tournaments, and it's all offline, and I can quit in the middle of a game if I have to do something or something comes up. I'm not dependent on internet connection. As opposed to the, the hockey and the Madden, which has always been online based, I never quite understood that. Why well, can't just start a season 
and just kind of play through it with my with my ultimate team and every game doesn't have to be against a real life person so I'm really hoping that they implement that offline online feature at this point I have not heard anything and the demo is not showing me anything but I just kind of want to put that on my on my dream list the, like, the ultimate fantasy team is back it is kind of fun if you don't really play it much or you've never done it I say it's worth a shot it's kind of cool you go you get packs you get players contracts abilities and essentially you get the chance to build your dream team one piece of advice for you if you want one specific player or you're looking for one specific position it's just easier to go out and actually bid on the player than actually trying to buy packs it's cheaper like 95 97 percent of the time and you can actually have a better chance of actually building the team that you want versus just wasting a bunch of money on packs that a lot of times you don't really get what you want and then very rarely you actually get what you do want but overall from what I've seen from this demo is I'm very excited about the the forward direction it is a graphically it is a user interface it is a gameplay it is an, a production value it is a, a GUI menu system that is leaps and bounds better than NHL 14 and it's what you'd expect from a next generation console version of the game so for that I say kudos to everybody out there I say get the demo before you get the game because of all of these changes if you like hockey the game's gonna be for you but it's not as arcadey as it has been in the past though they seem to have expanded on a bunch of the features which I think lend themselves perfectly to the first foray of the EA fr NHL franchise on the next generation console. So with that, I'm actually going to leave you, let you hear some commentary from the people in the game the rest of the way out, and thank you guys so much for stopping by. Come back to this channel on September 9th. I will be playing the season mode as I go after the Stanley Cup with my Tampa Bay Lightning, so come back and watch those games with me. Um, they'll either be live commentated or just the actual game. It'll probably be a weird hodgepodge of the two of them, depending on how things are going. But that's it. That's my time. Uh, thank you guys so much for stopping by, and as always, have a good day. Martinez carried that one between the blue lines. A shot. Wonderful work in close and a brilliant save. Really good move. Hammers one. Did not find the net with the shot. Nicely into the zone. Puck covered, whistle blown. Quick work on the faceoff. Perfect receipt of the pass. Save. The game is over. The Rangers get the victory. They had the puck enough, it seems, to have done more than they did. You're going to have games like that when you have the puck the majority of the time. But you're right, Doc. They did not generate enough. And again, we thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the evening as much as we did. For Eddie Olchek and Ray Ferraro, Mike Emmerich saying good night.